evening, Jesus Image family. It's a wonderful night to be in the house of the Lord. We just wanna welcome all of those watching online from around the world. We just pray that you're touched in your homes tonight. And let's just jump right in as a family. Let's just lift our hands, begin to minister to the Lord in your heart tonight. The Bible says that he has rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son and that we have redemption in his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. So just lift your voice with gratitude to the Lord tonight. Father, we come in the holy and matchless name of Jesus. By his blood and in his name, Lord, we enter in tonight to say thank you, Father, to say thank you for your marvelous love and your wonderful grace, Jesus. We say thank you tonight. We say thank you, Lord, for the cross and for your nail-pierced hands and feet, Lord, for perching us as your own possession, Lord. We come to give you all of the glory and all of the honor tonight. We say, be thou exalted above the heavens, Lord. We say, let your glory be above all the earth, Father. We thank you, Jesus, for your marvelous presence in this place tonight, Lord. Would you touch us, Lord? Would you fill us with your life tonight, Lord? We pray, Holy Spirit, glorify the name of Jesus, Lord. May he be lifted up in this house tonight. Let your glory fill the temple, Lord, and let every heart, let every heart, let every eye see and know that you are the one true living God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, and we give you all of the glory and honor tonight. In Jesus' matchless name.
to the Lord.
Let's worship him. Stand, please stand. To worship, oh my soul, oh my soul, rejoice, stick joy, joy, my king, in
just begin to bless him in the spirit. I feel something very beautiful tonight. I'd like you to join hands, just not across the aisles. And for the next two minutes, I want you to pray in the spirit. And stir up this atmosphere.
them up. Something's about to break in here. That's it. There's a sweet anointing.
break the yoke. To break the yoke and lift the heavy burden. He is here. He is here. To heal the hopeless heart and let the broken. Shout of praise tonight. Lift the praise. Can you just pray just for a few more seconds? Give you all the glory. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Let's look to Jesus now. Holy Father, Tonight, Lord, we've come to love you, to adore you. And we want to know you, Lord. Your people have come from all over the world to be in your presence tonight. And we confess our need for you once again. How we need you. We really need you, Lord. These are not mere words. Teach us to need you. Convince us of our need for you. Fill this place with your glory tonight. 
fill our hearts with your glory and presence. I lift Jesus so high. Heal our blindness to his face. Holy Spirit, please help us. Please help us see Jesus. Help us walk with him. Teach us to love him. Teach this next generation to love him. I ask you, Father, to teach this next generation how to love Jesus. And tonight, Lord, help us give Jesus all the glory. Who are we that you're mindful of us? Pour out your grace tonight, Lord, upon those who are addicted and bound, those living in darkness like I was, those sick, heal them tonight, like you healed me right here on this platform, Lord, 33 years ago, heal your people. Touch your inheritance tonight. Break us free from ourselves and from the vision of us. Just blind us to self, Lord. Give us eyes for you. Holy Spirit, you're the only one who can do it. And so tonight we yield the best we know. The best we know, Lord. We, it's the best we know. look past our limitation our inexperience and move by your grace not because of our qualification move by your grace tonight don't leave anyone the same I pray that as people leave they'd be overwhelmed by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit Let tonight be the most holy night we've known. Change us and touch us for your name's sake. Settle upon us. Grip us with conviction. Let us be more aware of you than anything or anyone. Come close, Lord. Trust us, I pray. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Can we seal that prayer with praise? Come on, seal it. Come on, lift your voice. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, seal that prayer with praise. Praise you, Lord. Blessed be your name. a little more. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. 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 Amen. Why don't you hug a few folks and find your seats. God bless you. Welcome. Can we thank the team and John? Would you do that, please? It's good to be home. Can we give Jesus praise one more time? Come on, all over the building. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, you're in for a special night tonight. 
at the end of the night, in about an hour, I'm going to ask Pastor Paul Teske to come and lead us in Holy Communion. He doesn't know the next part. <laughs> he said, what is it? <laughs> I'm going to ask him to anoint uh, all of the sick with oil. And then if he's still got any juice after that. Yeah. God said tonight he is going to cure the incurable. Amen. I receive that, Rev. He said God says tonight that he's going to cure the incurable. Amen. Last night I was in Nashville. I was uh, preaching at the Send. It was beautiful. Uh, and I was so honored to be there. Our team led the last set and uh, they gave us the last block in the arena and it was really a precious time. I got to meet one of my heroes, Darlene Check, and she, <laughs> it was quite funny, she, she said to me, oh, Michael, and I said, Darlene, I said, I should be doing that. <laughs> it's like we all know where we were when we heard Shout to the Lord for the first time. And it's like <laughs> Rev's generation knowing uh, where they were when they went, somebody went, when they went to the moon, you know. We all know where we were the first time we heard shouts of the Lord. <laughs> or maybe for Rev's generation, it was the invention of the horse and buggy. No, so, so it's a joke, Rev. It's a joke. <laughs> but um, she said to me, thank, thank you and thank your church. And she said, we watch you all the time. And my children have been so ministered to and their hearts so impacted by the purity of what's going on here. And it just meant the world to hear that uh, from, from somebody like Darlene. Uh, so uh, we, we will never understand the reach of ministering to the Lord's heart. So tonight's gonna be very sacred. Um, I love ministering in arenas and, and, and all of that, it's, it's, it's an honor, but this is a very special place. And every time I travel, I cannot wait to get home. Uh, you know what I've learned is so beautiful and holy, the more I travel, is like, not just what happens up here. Uh, the, the tender burning hearts of vo the volunteers, the, the guys running the wires and the cables who are locked in, the people backstage who are worshiping while we're out here, the, the media team that seeks the Lord for an hour before they run camera. Every week, every service, um, the, 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 it's, that's the glue, that's the beauty, that's the, the intangible. And I have to say, I, I haven't seen that before uh, on the road, uh, and I still haven't. And it's an honor that that's taking place here. And I love you and honor you all. I wanna thank all the teams, the volunteers, those wide-eyed, shiny ones in the parking lot. Uh, it's an, it really is an honor to be your pastor. So. Can we just thank all of these people that maybe nobody gets to see? It's beautiful. It's a real privilege. And uh, yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna receive tonight's offering uh, and then we're gonna get straight into some scripture. And then I'm gonna, we're gonna take communion, Rev. You're gonna lead us. And then if Rev still has some juice, as I said, I'll have him anoint as many of you with oil as possible, as he wants to, or as the Lord leads him. And if he says no, he's the bad guy. So it's a great night for me. I, I can't miss. This is awesome. Uh, <laughs> but um, it, was, it was really wonderful. Lindy called a few weeks back. She's like, do you guys mind if Steph joins your team? And we're like, yeah, we really mind. <laughs> yeah, please don't put Michael Jordan on our team. We don't. <laughs> so Steph joined us last night. That was really beautiful. Such a strength. Who is receiving the offering? Ryan. Come on. <laughs> Love you. I'm, I'm, believing, I'm believing something for Ryan. He's been having ringing in his ear for like a year, I think. Yeah, it's been over a year. Over a year, and that's very difficult. And I'm believing that the Lord's gonna touch him tonight. So welcome, Ryan, would you please? Thank you. Love you. 
Amen. You guys ready to give tonight? How many of you guys believe the Lord is here with us? Raise your hand. Amen. Well, let's give as though he is tonight, okay? How many know we believe he is in this room? And if we really had that heart posture that God is here with us, man, we would, we would run to these buckets to give into his hands tonight. I'm going to read Proverbs chapter uh, 3, and I'm going to read verse 5. A lot of you guys know this scripture. I hope it's not common or familiar, because no scripture should be familiar or common to us. But it's a beautiful scripture. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. The scripture says that we have to trust the Lord with all our hearts. And how many of you guys know in Matthew, the Bible says where our treasure is, there our hearts are as well. So in order for us to trust the Lord with all our hearts, we need to trust him with our finances and with our resources. How many of you guys know we trust him with our eternity? Think about that. Like we entrust the Lord with our eternity, with forever. How much more should we trust him with this earthly thing that we have temporary in our little lifespan, lifespan that we have here on earth? And I pray that tonight I felt it that some of you guys just don't fully trust the Lord. You know, there's a, a parable that the Lord talks about in Matthew of, of, of these three men with talents. And the last one who dug his treasure in the ground, the Bible says that he uh, perceived the Lord or perceived the master in the parable to be a harsh man. That his perception of God determined how much he actually trusts in God. And I pray that tonight that we see him clearly for who he is. The Bible says he is a good father. That every good and perfect gift comes down from the father of lights. You know, Amy quoted that scripture this morning, Psalms chapter 37, where David writes, I was young and now I'm old. I can relate to him in that part of the scripture. After two rounds of golf this week, I, I feel it. Um, but he says, I was young and now I'm old. And he says, I have, for no, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread, his children begging for bread. And that's who we serve tonight. That's who we're giving to tonight, a trustworthy one, one who is true. He is the only one that's true. See, there's people, you know, in relationship with people, we, we, whether it be finances or opening up to someone, you know, trust takes time, you know, when, when you open up your life to someone. But listen, I promise you, he has proven that he is trustworthy, that he is true. He has given his back for us. We, in moments like this, able to give something tangible to his hands, I pray we come in faith knowing that he is trustworthy, the only one who is trustworthy tonight. So I pray walls are broken down. If you feel that that, that trust may has not been there, I promise you he's trustworthy. He has shown me and my wife over the years of trusting him in times of lack and times of plenty that, Lord, we are trusting in you. And he has been faithful. He's the faithful one. We are not. So let's pray tonight and thank the Lord. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give into your hands tonight, Jesus. Father, I pray that we see you rightly tonight. We see you clearly, Lord. Therefore, we can trust you with our finances and with our resources, Lord, for you are true through and through. Father, we pray you bless every giver in this room. Father, for you are good. Every gift, every good thing we have in our life has come from you. Every perfect gift has come from you and you alone, Lord. So we thank you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. Let us love you with our offering tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you guys need an envelope, we have ushers throughout the room. Just raise your hand. We'll get you guys an envelope. Uh, we have the QR code up there. You guys watching online, there's a, a number on your screen. You can text and we'll be back shortly.
us pray. Father, thank you for your holy word that is life by which you formed the world and spoke us into existence. And you keep us for your word is bread. We live by every word that proceeds from your mouth. And so, Lord, let's lift our hands. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to feed us, feed us your heavenly bread. You said, I am the bread of God. I am the bread who comes down from heaven. We ask you, Lord, to feed us. Feed us your voice that is spirit and life and build up our lives in your holy word. Let your word dwell richly within us and transform us tonight into the image of Jesus in every day of our lives. And so, Lord, we come really knowing nothing and we ask you to teach us yourself teach us of yourself as well our hearts are ready we ask you to forgive our sin that we would rightly receive your holy word and we pray that your word would bear much fruit that is eternal and would make it through holy fire in the age to come in the name of Jesus we pray amen amen let's thank the Lord just one more time thank you Jesus you can be seated I also want to Welcome and recognize Rivers, who is Pastor Paul's better half. Clearly, Rivers, would you stand, please? And uh, I'll just say you students are in for a fun week in God. It's going to be a wild week. Uh, you know, one time, this sounds crazy, but a lot of my stories are... We were in New Jersey in a mall parking lot, Jess and I and my cousin, and this guy gave us a bag full of live lobster. He said, do y'all want it? And I was like, sure. <laughs> you know, where I'm from, if somebody offers you lobster, you don't say no. And uh, they were alive, and we put them in the back of the rental in New Jersey. And they, I didn't know lobsters cry. They make sounds, you know. They're like, Rrr. calm down, man. Jeez, they're... <laughs> They're a cursed animal anyways. You shouldn't be so sympathetic. And uh, so I didn't know what to do with them. So we called Rivers. She lived, they lived in Connecticut. I'm like, hey, Rivers, where's Rev? Uh, and she's like, he's at a, a Kufi meeting, Christians United for Israel. And I was like, well, we got a trunk full of lobster. We're in Jersey. Should we drive up? It was like two hours <laughs> at 11 at night. She's like, yes, get over here. I'm always down for a party. So we... We drive up with these lobsters. I call my friend in Tarpon who owns a Greek restaurant. I'm like, what's the best way to cook a lobster? He gave me the whole spiel. And we showed up. We cooked him. We had a blast. And Rev wasn't even home when he walked in. Didn't even know that we were coming over. We were living in Florida at the time. And he's like, what are you doing in my house? Why does it smell like fish? We've had amazing, amazing times together. But in all seriousness, there's such a strength to Jesse and I, this whole house, this ministry. Rev served on our board since 2008. So I love you, Rev. Love you, Rivers. Thank you for being here. Can we honor them? Yeah. And I think... And I don't know why this is funny, but John is sitting in between them, which is just... Which is incredible. He wanted a double blessing, yeah. I also want to thank Michael and Anna Dow for being here. They pastor in this city. Can we welcome them? They pastor so faithfully, and they're a wonderful, wonderful family. Gosh, we go back a long time, and some of their kids are here, which makes me feel really old. And they, ha they have a child a year, which seem it seems like. <laughs> we love you all both. Honor to have you. Thank you for being here. Let them know you love them just one more time. Would you do that, please? All right. A few announcements. Uh, we already have, I think, almost 2,000 registered for Jesus 24 in the Anaheim Arena. Fit, well, it's just... It, no, Meg, it's over that. Thank you, though. Thank you. Remember my, I have the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's my fear of the Lord police, Jess is. So uh, for those of you on the West Coast or those of you around the world, uh, we will be there June 6th through the 8th. This is our first time taking 
this year end Jesus event to the West Coast. So really it's our first year taking out of Orlando and we're shocked by the response. They're coming in from all over the world. I want to invite our Orlando church family to come. This is a missions trip. I want you to start saving from now. Make plans to be there. It should be up on the screen. You can scan that QR code and those of you watching, it is going to be pandemonium. God has been speaking to us through dreams and many encounters with, uh, that God is about to move on the West Coast and that the West Coast and the East Coast must connect. And the actual word we got a decade ago was that Orange County and Orange County would connect. And this was prior to us pastoring here. So God is on the move. We want to invite you to come. It will be incredible. And that being said, the next leg of our Jesus tour on the West Coast will be in Phoenix. And can we throw that up as well? Oh, gosh, you guys are quick. All right. March 22nd, we will be in Phoenix, and I think a few hundred have already registered for that as well. So if you'd like to come get there, it'll, it'll fill very quickly. Amen? Okay, I love you all. Take your Bibles to John chapter 1. Yes is right. Just to protect my voice, the mix was wild last night. So could Amy and Ryan just grab some mics? I couldn't hear, I don't think our team could hear much of themselves either, is that right? It was, it was rough, yeah. All right, y'all got him? Okay, I'm gonna begin reading John 1 because it's my favorite chapter in the Bible. And then uh, I'll have them read some other verses. All right. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. I can't read this chapter without feeling the power of God. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it or overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John, which, by the way, the Greek word for John, Ioanni, is grace. I bet you never thought of John the Baptist's ministry as a grace-filled ministry, <laughs> but to God it is. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. I hope you're paying close attention to the language, this glorious language. He was in the world and the world was made through him and the world did not know him. He came to his own, meaning Israel, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Do you know, if you would lean in right now, many of you who are shackled by the powers of the devil... Do you know that while I'm reading, if you would give your heart and your full attention to what I'm reading, you could be set free right now? Do you know how powerful the Word of God is? Last, I'm just going to, I've got to be a pastor right now. We're going to have a little house cleaning here. Say thank you. thank you. Say Michael still loves me. Okay, good. Now I'm going to stab you. Last week, last week it was like, it looked like an aerobics class in here. So many of y'all were moving around. Now, I know we all have to go to the bathroom. I do it occasionally. <laughs> I understand. Understand the need to use the bathroom. But last week, it was beyond that. Pastor Benny is teaching on the blood of Jesus. And a few of you got up like five times. Now, either uh, you ate, you drank Tabasco sauce, a half bottle of it, and had bubble guts. <laughs> or, or... Or, listen, the blood of Jesus doesn't stir your soul and you're not enamored by it. And this isn't for everyone. I realize this is a different crowd than Sunday morning. 
But at Jesus' image, we sit under the word. This is not a weekly concert. It'll never be. When we first started, I remember over at Judah, some people would come in for the worship set and roll, which is proof they don't have a heart to worship. The word produces true worship. My job is not, uh, our job is not to lead you in music. Our job is to form you in Christ. It is impossible to have that without the word. When the word is rooted deeply within you, the only rightful response is worship. And this isn't the case, but last, last week, look, you guys are amazing, but last week I, I told Jesse, I've got to say something. We have a father in the faith who's been doing this for over 50 years, teaching us about the most holy substance in the cosmos and in the heavens, the precious blood of Jesus that is the very magnet for the life of the Holy Spirit. What could be more important than receiving a revelation of the blood? Now, if you've got to go, go and get back in. But if you just get bored, I just want to say right off the bat, the clock is not Jesus here. When we roll in, we stop when he's done. That's what we do. This will never be a cookie cutter, conveyor belt, celebrity church. We sit under the word, receive it like it's the bread of life, and beg God for more. Now, if you have to pee while I'm preaching, I will not call you out. I just want to take authority so that we know how to be in God's presence. This is important. And I think, I don't know another church who's better at this, but I think it could have been just demonic distraction last week. Because you start talking about the blood and stuff gets stirred up. But I would rather you manifest in your chair. Actually, if you start manifesting, you can go in the lobby. Our team will deal with it. So I can keep preaching. <laughs> we'll put David on you. But I want us to become very, very good at sitting at his feet and hearing his word. And you are, but it's my job to correct it when I see distraction. Distraction, listen carefully, is an enemy of the anointing. We are living in a world that is overly stimulated. We are living in a world that is so busy at a sensory level that we, we are not beholding the Lord. The devil is after your vision. I mean your actual eyes. He's after your attention. He's after your thoughts. He's after busying your ears because he knows ultimately all roads lead to the soul which ultimately lead to the heart. He's wanting a mixed, distracted, busy heart. I don't, I don't care. Look, the Lord knows my heart. The Lord knows this is the truth. If I was not in the ministry, I'm telling you, I would fry my social media. It is, it is, it is the, 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 the phone, like, it's like the principality has shape, shape shifted in this generation. It's a cell phone that is fighting for your attention. And, and you, you just cannot find union with God looking at someone else. It, it, he... Joy Dawson used to tell me, bless her soul, how I miss her. She used to tell me, oh, darling boy, he changes the rules for nobody. It still requires stillness. It still requires solitude. It still requires communal life. It still requires the body and blood of Jesus. It still requires meditating and prayerfully digesting Holy Scripture. It still requires a repentance and confession of sin. It still requires hours and hours of prayer and year after year until the Lord starts to slowly, through a slow drip, open our blindness. This will never change. This isn't extreme. This isn't toxic. This is Christian. This is Christian. And when, you know, uh, a few weeks ago, Carrie and Job and Cody came and they, they pulled our team in the back. They just wanted to worship the Lord on New Year's. And, and they, they grabbed our team in the back and they said, and they thanked me. They said, you should be grateful for a house that protects your purity. And we need to. We need, look, the heart of a Levite is to do what? Minister to the Lord and also carry a sword on your hip. To cut out mixture. It's just my job. I hope you feel loved by it. But I want to see you at the throne 
And I want, to, I want you to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Yes. I want you to gain as much of Christ as possible experientially in this life. That's my job as a pastor. Amen? Yes. Okay, do you receive it? Yes. All right. Say Michael loves me. Michael. All right. Now, back to who Jesus is. Let me keep reading. We'll start in verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, or tabernacled among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me because he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him, him being the Father. Or another way of reading that verse in the Greek would be, he has perfectly exegeted the Father. That word means to unravel, to, to lovingly expose and reveal. Jesus is the Father's only message and sermon. Say that. Jesus, Jesus. Is, the Father's is the Father's only sermon. Only sermon. Only. We know this because of the only thing the Father preached in the New Testament. It was simply this. Whenever the Father spoke, this is my Son. Hear ye him or in whom I am well pleased. The Father has one thing or person to talk about. It is Jesus, and it will forever be Jesus. The Father's only... <laughs> I'm just going to do it. The Father's only sermon is not revival. I believe in renewal. I believe in the move of the Spirit. Of course. Gosh, I mean, I'm a son of that. But if you want to attract the presence and power of the Holy Spirit, you must be addicted to Jesus. Yes. And Jesus said of the Spirit, he won't even testify of himself. Proof positive of a life that's yielded to the Spirit is an addiction to the Son of God, who has perfectly defined the Father. Now, to get to a few prophetic words that I think are the Lord about this new Jesus movement, this new Jesus people movement. I believe that. Why else? God has never changed the subject. It's all he ever wanted. It was us who, who defined and settled for manifestations and turned those manifestations into God's message. But those manifestations are not God's message. Jesus is God's message. Those are manifestations that are supposed to turn our heart to the Lord himself. So if God moved in in great joy, the move became all about laughter. If God moved in with great repentance and groaning, we labeled it as that. The whole time, all the Lord is trying to do is show us the joyful son, show us the weeping prophet, show us the one who grieves over the nations, and all we do is market the mere manifestation. God is attempting, and he's pulling out all stops in this last generation to build a church that would actually bite the hook and believe that Jesus is enough. And you say, well, why should I believe that? Because the Father believes it. The Father is convinced that Jesus is enough or he would have never sent him. If the Father felt we needed something else, he would have never sent his Son. Somebody came here who I love. It was the funniest thing. And Jessie's the, uh, she is the, uh, how do I say it? The purity police around here, which I love. And this person came to school and said, oh man, it was awesome. Well, it wasn't awesome what he said, but it was awesome to see the reaction. This is what they said. Jesus is not all you need. And our students went, war paint. <laughs> What? How can he who is 
all in all who has filled everything with himself who not only ascended but descended into the lowest parts of the earth to fill all things with himself who has filled the universe with himself how can he who is all not be enough so Jesse goes um, with all due respect you can't say that here why am I reading John 1? Listen, we need a biblical and clear vision of the Son of God again. I'm in and out of so many moments and environments, but I, I, I've just got to be honest. I'm deeply, and this isn't judgment, it's the heart of, of a pastor who wants you to experience the wonder of Christ Jesus. I'm standing here before you as someone who's been smitten. And by God's grace, the thought of changing the subject feels like a massive fall. I feel like I would have backslidden if I turned into a life coach next week here. Now, if you are, I'm not dogging you. I'm just saying, I can't find a higher, more glorious thing to talk about than the bosom of the Father, than the Father's only Son, than the perfect and holy righteous Lamb of God. My concern, this is my concern, is that when I'm in and out of places, I'm discovering that people are settling for mere excitement and high-pitched moments, whether they're driven by music, which by the way, lyrically in some cases, aren't even about Jesus. This, this is not a criticism. It's, I hope you hear it. Uh, it's, it's like we're settling short of the river. And we're, we're, we're starting to believe that excitement can satisfy the soul. Now, I'd rather you be excited than dead and boring. But, but, but we've got to move beyond, as a generation, we've got to move beyond this thing. And I don't even know what to call it. But I'm discovering that when I break the scriptures on the road, when I start to open the text by the Spirit, there's a disengagement. That concerns me. But if the drummer takes off and the tempo goes up, there's an engagement. And I... I if there's going to be a real Jesus movement, we need Jesus. <laughs> we, we don't need more savvy marketing. We actually need him. Him. The real man from Galilee dwelling among us, trusting us enough to reveal himself to us. You must understand when the Lord begins to reveal himself to you, two things are happening. He's opening your eyes and he's offering himself to be more available. Both are glorious. Nobody encounters the Lord by accident on the Lord's part. Remember what John 2 says, that he did not give himself to men because he knew what was in men. He needed no man teach him about men. So he did not fully give himself to them. When Jesus begins to reveal himself to us, it is because he's beginning to trust us. We're not opening our own eyes. Nobody here can open the eyes of the heart. Nobody here can purify their own heart. Nobody here can scrub themselves clean. This is the work of the Spirit. It's the work of God. Are you understanding? So when the Lord starts to entrust himself to us by a more clear vision, this is a holy thing. And I want to say, unless we behold him, you can throw that Jesus movement stuff out the window. We need him. We actually need him. Now if that's going to happen, listen carefully. This place, us, I can't speak into other environments. I have no authority in those environments. But I can speak here. And I'm not saying we don't do this, but there's more. 
I've been stirred up, in case you haven't noticed. I'm stirred up. Because the only way to protect what we have here is to go after Jesus more. A stagnant lack... Oh, this one gets me. All right. I'll do it in front of John because he'll like it. I don't understand how Jesus can be in a room. If we really believed he's in a room, I do not get, and I'm not saying I'll do this even though I'm standing next to you. <laughs> Esther's like, my God, is it me? No. <laughs> I don't get how leadership can do this during worship. Man, oh, I don't understand it. I don't understand if we're truly aware that the Jesus I just read about in John 1 who's before all things, who came before John the Baptist, preferred before him because he was before him. He's in the beginning as the word, the very divine expression who is with God relationally, meaning God the Father. And he is God according to John 1. How can Jesus be in the midst and we settle to scroll on a phone? I don't get it. I don't get it. I've been places where while Jesus is being worshipped and while the Holy Scriptures are being taught, which, by the way, receiving the Scriptures is a matter of life and death. Yes. Receiving the Scriptures doesn't take an average day and make it a little better. Jesus said, man does not live. Man does not live. Man does not live by bread alone. Therefore... If I don't receive the word that proceeds from his mouth, it's a matter of life and death. I die inside. And the devil's caused us to choose between scripture and his presence. It's a joke. The scriptures are a heavenly window straight into the glory of God. They are charged with his breath. The scriptures are the revelation of his heart put to paper because only Jesus is so true to speak from the abundance of his heart. That's what he said. He said it's from the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. Therefore, when I open the Bible, I can rest assured that I am reading his heart. What could be more valuable? I get stirred up. I, I don't get it. I'm so glad Pastor Benny taught us reverence to hear the word of the Lord. I'm so glad he taught us that while Jesus is being worshipped, I shouldn't be talking about something else. What else is there to talk about? I've been in certain youth environments where we're singing Alleluia or some holy song. And they're kicking it, talking about other stuff. And yet they have the audacity to ask for his glory. <laughs> This isn't old time. This is just Bible. He refuses to be approached without a hundred percent focus. He doesn't understand it. When we first started Jesus Image, Jess and I were on a date. Or not Jesus Image. When we started the Sunday nights and, and Jess and I were on a date. And I don't know if you remember this, but these, we saw these two millennials dating. They were both on their phone. And I looked at them. I'm like, babe, how good could this date be going? <laughs> Literally at a table Hopefully the dude's paying for it. These days, who knows? Maybe they went, maybe they split it. And the, they're both like this. And I'm thinking, how far could this go? How deep can this moment go? How much of the heart can actually be exchanged when the vision is placed elsewhere? And then after the end of the date, you know, one of them said, I just didn't feel like we connected. Oh, will you think? <laughs> maybe not. How much more? Does Jesus have the right to demand our attention when he comes close? Now he's always with us, always in us, but there is a sacred aspect to his presence that is only available when we gather as a family. He said, I will be there in the midst of you. We see this with the ancient church of Israel in Exodus 25. He says, create for me a habitation that I might come and dwell among you. 
He was omnipresent then when he said it. David and I were talking about this today regarding this type of teaching uh, uh, and, and its relationship to church. He said there's a mindset out there that just believes that if we gather in any way, shape, or form as Christians, that Jesus promises to be there in the exact same way. It's not biblical. And Exodus 25 teaches us that the Lord demands a specific design, a specific way of building if he's going to come live with you. And that's why he gives Moses the blueprint. It expresses his heart to be with us. But listen, we are with him on his terms. Are you getting it? So I don't care if Gen Z or the new one is Alpha. I don't even give a rip about all the labels. Old people need Jesus. Young people need Jesus. Babies need Jesus. Well, I don't, I'm not into all of it. And I know 80% of this crowd is Gen Z. I love you. But these ancient pathways into the presence aren't moving for Gen Alpha. They're not moving for, you, for anyone. They are what they are. He has determined the blueprint. See, if you don't receive, it's not just the preacher's fault. It's not just the worship leader's fault. It's so easy to go there. But if you read Mark 4 properly, and I've taught this so many times, if you read Mark 4 properly, we actually discover that the one who has a little loses what he has. And to, to, to begin that text, how many of you have heard me teach on that? Okay, how many of you have never? Good, most of you. Go to Mark 4. <laughs> Quick, it always comes out different, so I, it'll, it'll be all right. I want to give you the ESV here, so just one second. Is this all right? Yes. I'm going to do it anyways. <laughs> all right. Mark 4. We'll start in verse 13. Thank you, Lord. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? So we see the parable of the sower is a, it's like an ATM code into the revelation of Jesus' parabolic ministry. The sower sows the word. Who sows the word? So tonight, as I'm preaching, the Son of God is scattering seed. That's pretty amazing. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Where is the wayside? It's on the side of the way. Super deep. It's on the side of the way. It is outside the experiential touch of his presence. It's the... It's, it's in the realm of distraction. It's in the realm of settling for less than the beauty of his face daily. It's in the realm of having a big meeting, but not looking at him the next day. It's in the realm of sitting in a meeting like this tonight and just hoping nine o'clock comes quickly. It's in the realm of when your body is not tired, you not putting it under subjection. That's what Paul said. Daily, daily, I put my body under subjection. You know what he says after that? If by any means I myself be a castaway. The Apostle Paul. This body 
will be glorified one day when we receive a new one. Until then, it will fight you. You're like, I've never heard this before. I know, that's part of the problem. The passions of the body, the passions of the natural man, the limitations of the body that say, stay in bed, don't get up. You don't need him today. You don't need him today. It's too cold in my room. We live in Florida. How cold could it be? Get out from that little polka dot pink comforter that John has. Get to your recliner and go wait on God. John wears that little onesie with the three buttons on the back. The, the little white thermal one with the little hat with the poofy ball every night, man. Change your clothes, John. Get up and pray. <laughs> I had to make y'all laugh, give you a little anesthesia. <laughs> That's what happens. That's what the wayside feels like. And when you live by the wayside and the word is preached, the devil steals the word. Location, 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 location. Proximity to Jesus is everything if the word is not going to be stolen. Are you getting it? Mary receives a word from Gabriel. What does she do? Treasures it. The Greek word is she keeps it. She protects it. Her heart hovers over it. There's a hedge around it. Like the Shulamite says, a garden enclosed is my sister. Speaking of the Lord's word. God, when he begins to speak, his desire is to build a garden in our hearts and then lock the garden gate so that only he can get in. And that's what happened with Mary. She kept the word. And I think she bore some fruit. I said, I think she bore some fruit. Gave birth to the Holy Son of God. That's what the wayside's like. It, the wayside throws in the towel when the weakness of the natural man starts to cry out. Let me, let me say that another way. When the weakness and the comforts of the flesh rear their head, the people that live by the wayside say, you win. There's something beautiful about getting up before the sun. I'm not saying you have to, but you should. I would if I were you. You say, tell me, show it to me in the Bible. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> because if I don't, you have every right in the world to disagree with me. If it's not in the scriptures, I'm wrong. Jesus, up before the morning, seeking the Lord. David, early will I seek thee. Joshua, up the mountain to seek the Lord. Moses, by the way, before the sun is up. Moses, early in the morning, seeking the Lord. That's a good lineup. Yeah. David, Jesus, Moses, Joshua. I'm going with them. I don't care who preached what. You, oh, just rest in it. Rest, enjoy. Yeah. Rest in the glory. Don't rest in your flesh. Come on. That's religion. No, it's not religion. It's glory. It's beautiful. Do you realize what one vision would do to your life? One touch? There have been so many Sundays here, or actually mostly at the school. Well, I'll come into the school, and the world feels like it's caving in around me. The pressure, pain, it's a daily thing. And sometimes I'm wondering, how will I find anything to say? But there's something wonderful about building a reservoir over decades. That when that thing is tapped, what you stored up over decades starts to spill forth. If you beheld the Lord for a second, you'd have something to say to a whole generation. You had one revelation of the cross. The devils in hell would tremble. One. 30 seconds in an encounter with Jesus as the scriptures open to you about his holy blood 
hell would quake under your feet. But this stuff's not cheap. I said, it's not cheap. He is incredibly generous. He sows the word. You say, why would he ever sow by the wayside? Because he's generous. He scatters, the, uh, he scatters the seed of the word like this because it's his nature. And it's also a matter of his justice so that at the throne one day, those by the wayside will never be able to say, I didn't hear you. Or I should say, I didn't listen to you. It's a matter of his kingdom justice. In the age to come, nobody will say, I just didn't know. Oh, yes, you did. I scattered that word so liberally, so generously, that I even scattered it by the wayside. Why don't you just get in behind me where the soil is beautiful, where the soil is stirred up, where the weeds have been removed, where there's moisture, the same moisture that watered Eden, that the Holy Spirit moisture that I exude as the Son of God. Why don't you just walk with me so that when I speak, a harvest is guaranteed. He's your protector. I said, he's your protector. Now, I want to save time, but trust me, this is in the Word. It's in Mark 4. Go read it tonight. God is so aware of the holiness of his word. Recently I was preaching and people were laughing and goofing off. I thought, do you have any idea what the capability of the word of God is? Do you have any idea what you're forfeiting? The word of God formed the world. The world. Do you think his word could heal your body? The word of God keeps stars suspended in their proper location. Do you think the scriptures could blow your depression out of your mind? I don't think, I, I don't, I don't, we need a revelation of the beauty of his voice. I, 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 I know I can't do that for you, but, I, I, but it has to happen. It's got to. We have to be like Mary and just sit at his feet going, say it again, say it again, again, again. I don't care what you say. Say anything you want. Just speak. Just talk. Tell me to do, I don't even care if you tell me to do anything. I don't care if you give me a direction, if you just want to breathe and say anything. If you don't talk, David said, it's like I live in the pit. Speak. Speak to me. Break the bread of life. That's what, that's the type of heart Jesus is looking for. I, but the way, listen, the way you come to him will determine what you extract from him. You don't come into him. You don't come to him with a lackadaisical heart. John knows what I'm talking about. He's been around. There's this thing where people are worshiping. You could be in a big arena and the most famous worship leaders are doing this. Right or wrong. Networking instead of ministering to the savior of the world. Every once in a while. We're not tipping him. This is the wounded king of glory. Who's from the ancient past, as Micah says. Who's in the beginning. Who doesn't dwell in eternity. Eternity dwells in Jesus. This is the one. The one who not only, as I said, spoke the worlds, but listen to what the scriptures say about him, upholds upholds all things by the word of his power and we do this and then we're, we, we have the, the audacity to demand the Jesus movement spare me I'm glad I was raised by old reverent sage-like, Bible-loving people of prayer and presence. 
And I'm, I'm, I'm talking to everyone, all, all of you young people. Be that. Be that. Be the, be the house that says, look, I'm forfeiting the bells and whistles for Jesus himself. Teach us the way of our fathers. Teach us the faith that's been handed down once, once and for all. We need, what I've discovered recently more than ever, is we need worship leaders and musicians who I believe we have here. But we all have a long way to go. We need worship leaders and musicians around the world who when they play a chord are looking for weight and moisture. Who when they write a song are making sure it's actually Bible. Who when they write, write to the Lord as the Lord being their source. Who write about the Lord and for the Lord. From him, to him, and through him. That's the only acceptable sacrifice. This is what we need again. We need people who reject the God of their stomachs. Who have the hunger to reject a meal so that their connection to this world dissipates and they find a food that is heavenly. I know I'm talking about a lot, but I'm stirred up in the most glorious way. This is who we are. I said, this is who we are. This is where we're going. This is not works. This is love. Now, let me end with this. Help me there, Joel. Jesus says about this seed. <laughs> and the context, if you read Mark 4, is his voice. Because he says, let he who has ears to hear, let him hear. The context is who can hear God. Who can hear God? Jesus School students, young people who've come in, I, I believe from all around the world tonight, you will not have a different route than any of us. He's not going to change the manual for you. If it takes hours with God for us, it's going to take hours with God for you. If it's going to take multiple fasts a year for us, it will take multiple fasts for you. If it's going to take serving, yeah, I said it, men and women of God and your local church, it's going to take that for you. Whether you think that's unhealthy leadership or not, it is the way into the river of glory, period. Death to self, preferring a brother, preferring a father, preferring a mother above us is still, is still holy. <clears throat> not going to morph it, not going to shift it, not going to make it more palatable. But this context of hearing what the, regarding the Lord speaking, this is what he says about it. I want you to hear this. He says... He who has a little, even what he has, will be taken. And he who has much, more will be given to him. Maybe you're like, that's not fair. God has never been fair. Yeah. He's just. So he takes what God, listen, if you don't steward, if, if John tonight is receiving a word from heaven, John has a choice. He can take this seed tonight and steward it, protect it, and treasure it, and then John will receive more. But if John doesn't steward what he's hearing tonight, he will lose it. Now here's the wild part. Let's never forget what I'm about to tell you. The only way to keep what God said to you is to lean into what he's saying to you. You missed it. 
The only way to protect every prophetic utterance throughout the decades of your life is to come to the burning bush today. What God is saying protects what God said to me. But if I don't find the burning bush to be glorious this morning, I will forget what God said to me five years ago. And this is what the Lord does. He takes what God has spoken now to John tonight. And he finds rivers as being hungry. Even though she might have loads more. He gives it to her. Because he can trust her. And that's why it looks like a few people get a lot from God. It's not that they're great. It's because he trusts them. I want that for us. I don't ever want this house to be the place where we get used to what God is doing. No, 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 no. Stir up that. Stir up that thing inside. Stir up that well. And come to Jesus. Every day. Amen. I'd like uh, the communion elements to be passed out. Have they been? I'm going to ask Pastor Paul to come. Do you receive that tonight? I know I'm... uh, We need this, guys. We need, we need to keep coming to the feet of the Lord. I... We are not going to receive communion until we give the opportunity to repent of our sin. This is very important. This is a family meal. This is a covenant meal. This is a holy meal. This is the meal of healing when received properly. It's the meal of, can be the meal of sickness and death when received improperly. And it's my job tonight. Just, just, just a moment before we hand out the communion, communion elements. If you just wait one second. With every head bowed and eye closed. If, if he, I believe God brought you here tonight. I believe the Lord. Before you were ever born. Ordained you to be in this room. I want to speak to two people. Two groups. Those who have departed from the Lord. And you know it. Because sin is reigning. That's the sign. Sin is reigning. Hunger for God is diminishing. Freedom in Jesus is weakening in you. Bondage and a lackadaisical heart is increasing. The fire of the Spirit in you is diminishing. You know it. Your tears haven't wept, or your eyes haven't wept tears in a long time. Habits that you once had victory over are gaining strength. You've become used to obeying the flesh. That's the first group. The second group are those of you who've never fully yielded your life to Jesus. Those of you who know you need the Lord. You've come tonight and you no longer want sin to be your master. You want to be free from the porn, from the addiction, from the bondage, from the hatred, from the torment, from the shame, and from the condemnation. You want to be free. Many of you are tired of the cycles. You're tired of coming into a place like this. Feeling shame. I'm here to tell you, Jesus took your shame. You come to him by faith and lay your life down. He wants your life. He wants your yes. He wants your heart. If that's you tonight, if you're in, if anything I said, You felt in the depths of your being by the Spirit. I want you to lift your hand very quickly and put it down. Thank you, Lord. Keep those hands up. Actually, just keep them up. Thank you. Put it up with no shame. Thank you, Father. Many of you. I'd like all of us to stand right now, if we could, please. And I want us all to pray. For the sake of time and just the flow of this meeting, I'm not going to have you come forward. I don't need to. I don't need to. We typically do that. But the Lord saw you and so did we. I want us to pray this out loud tonight. Heavenly Father, Father, cleanse my soul. soul. Forgive me. me. Wash me in the holy blood of Jesus. Jesus. Tonight, Tonight, I turn from my sin. I I repent. I I turn from this world. 
I no longer want anything to do with this world. And I renounce the devil. Jesus, tonight I give the entirety of my life to you. Receive it. Cleanse me. Light a fire in my heart. Jesus, I declare and I believe that you are the Holy Son of God, the Righteous One, who suffered and died in my place, who shed his blood to pay for my sin, who died, was buried, and raised again. You are God Almighty, and you are my Lord. You are Adonai, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You have ascended to the right hand of the Father. And you're returning again to judge the living and the dead. Find me ready, Lord Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Oh, just lift your hands, everyone in the room. Just say, Lord, fill me. Fill me tonight. Many of you again, just ask him again. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, wonderful Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Paul, would you come? I'm going to ask. May I have a mic, please? And I need communion, please. Let's remain standing as Pastor Paul Thank leads you, us in Holy Communion. You know, as, as Pastor Michael said, this meal is only for believers, for those that believe in Jesus Christ, crucified and risen. And I know you're at that place. It's also for us who have contrite hearts, we have sinned against God in our thoughts, words, deeds, by things we did or didn't do. We, we sin, but yet we know that through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have total forgiveness. And we confess our sins. So I want to give you a moment of silence just to confess your sin to the Lord. The sins that he knows, that you know. And I want you to hear this. As you confess it, the blood of Christ has covered you and Amen. washed away all your sins. But just take a personal moment now and in silence just confess to the Lord and ask for his forgiveness through his son Jesus Christ. Amen. Father God, I thank you for the forgiveness, the redemption that covers not a multitude, Amen. but all, all our sins, Lord God that we are robed in a robe of righteousness given us by Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We praise you for that, and thank you. And, Lord, we thank you that on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and he broke it, and he gave it, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. And then in the same way after supper, he took the cup, and he gave it, and he said, Drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, Thank given you, and shed for you for the Thank forgiveness you, of your sins. So now receive the body of Christ broken, that by his stripes you would be healed. Receive your healings, church. Receive your healing. Now receive the blood of Christ you, for your redemption. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the real presence of Jesus Christ in his body that comes in and supernaturally restores our brokenness, brokenness in our hearts, in our minds, our bodies, our relationships. And, Lord, thank you for the blood that redeems us and settles our spiritual need that we are whole before you. We are sinless and free as children of God. Thank you for this precious gift, Lord, the body and blood of Christ. And may it enrich you in your faith and strengthen you in your walk. Let the body of Christ now, Lord God, just enrich your people, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And let the blood ensure you of your redemption in Jesus Christ. Now go and serve the Lord. Serve him. Be a witness, a strong witness to your faith. For your faith is your greatest witness to the world. What you believe in your heart and mind is what the world will see in your life. Now, Father, bless Yes. And keep your people, Lord. Let your face shine on them. Be gracious to, a, to them. Lift up your countenance this. and give them your peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise. Come Thank on. You, Thank Jesus. you, Lord. Thank you. Yeah? Yeah. How do you want to do it? All right. Please be seated for a moment. Um, here's what we're going to do. I'm, I'm going to tell you a quick healing that just happened because I want it to be a faith builder for you. So how many of you were at the uh, Jesus Image 2023? All right. So my wife and I, right before we came, went to Atlanta. A friend of mine had just retired. Good dear friend was told by his doctor that he had bone marrow cancer and that he had to be put quickly on a list, a bone marrow transplant list because it was so serious. So he called Rivers and I, and so right before we came here, we went up to Atlanta and, and laid hands on him with his family and prayed over him. We had communion. I baptized his five grandchildren, and we left. And his doctors all said that he was, you know, not really going to make it. Well, two weeks later, he calls us up, and he says he has no bone marrow cancer, no cancer in his body at all. You know, Rev, about that, last night in Nashville, a guy named Will Hart, who works with Heidi Baker, he came to me last night. He's like, I need to talk to you. He had two missionary friends that were dying. They came to Jesus 23, dying. He pulled me backstage last night. He said, you need to hear this. When you all received communion at Jesus 23, they were completely healed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, our friend... I talked to him two days ago. He's still bone cancer free. He has a couple of doctors that saw the results from six weeks ago. And even though they can't see anything in his system now where there's cancer, they're still trying to come to terms with the fact that he didn't have cancer. Now look, our God is bigger than anything. And a while ago when I was sitting there, God really said, tonight I'm gonna cure the incurable. And then I had no idea Michael was gonna have me do this, but here's what, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come down here and stand here. I've got oil in my pocket, and I'm going, and when you come by, I'm just going to anoint your forehead in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why? Because in James 5, it says, if anyone is sick, let them confess their sin, go to the elders of the church, they'll anoint them with oil. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm Amen. just a vessel. I can't heal a flea. Jesus is the healer. <laughs> but I believe that Jesus did part Amen. something. And, and uh, can I tell them a little bit? Right. Yeah. I had a stroke 20 years ago yeah, this yeah, coming month. Did, uh, did you guys hear, have you not, how many of you have not heard Rev's healing testimony? Oh, man. Okay. Well, just real quick. So I went to a Benny Hinn crusade. Uh, God but told tell me, them what happened. What? How, how, you got, how you had the stroke. Okay. Stroke. So I was talking to 200 businessmen in, in New Canaan, Connecticut, and all of a sudden I had a cerebral hemorrhage, an artery broke in my brain and immediately left me paralyzed on my left side. I went into the hospital. I was there two weeks. I had eight doctors, they'd all said I'd be a cripple the rest of my life, I wouldn't be able to walk because my left side was just... And one said you could bleed out that night and die. I had a, had a you know, well, oh, yeah, well, when, I, when I'm laying in the, well, Rivers is there, the, the night that they've got me in the hospital, and um, the doctor says, look, Rev, if this bleeds out tonight, uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Now, I'd been a hospital chaplain in the Navy, I knew what he was talking about, I'd go into a coma, so when the doctor left, I said to Rivers, look, three things. If, if I slide into a coma tonight, let me go. You know, don't, don't tarry because let me go. I'm going to heaven. And I said, have the church, uh, you know, throw an Easter party when I'm gone, you know. And so she left that night. And I was thinking, you know, this would be the last uh, night that I go to sleep. And, you know, I was, you know, talking about being kind of anxious. And so I went to the Lord and I confessed every sin that I had not even committed, you know, because I wanted to make sure that if I died... <laughs> You know, I'd be come good and faithful servant. Well, I woke up. I was all right, still paralyzed. So two weeks later, I leave the hospital, but God told me in the hospital he was going to heal me in 21 days. That's another story. So I told Rivers, look, take me to Baltimore on May 28th, which was 21 days after my stroke, because God's going to heal me. And so I go to a Benny Hinn crusade. They see us in the audience down here, and... Um, during worship, my body starts to shake, and I'm completely healed. Benny didn't pray for me. Nobody prayed for me. I was healed in worship. 
That's why I believe worship is so powerful because yes. God shows up and Amen. broken things are made whole. Amen. That's what happened. I told the worship team before we came out in prayer that tonight God was going to make broken things whole during Amen. worship. So, and then I had this unction that God was going to heal the, the, you know, the incurable people. When the doctor says, you're, you know, you're not going to be cured, God knows better. My eight doctors said, you'll never walk again. And so I had a brace in my leg, a walker, a wheelchair. I go to the Benny Hinn meeting. Your leg behind you. Yeah, yeah. I could, well, I couldn't walk from here to Michael. I mean, I was paralyzed on my left side, all right? So <laughs> we're in the audience. I start to shake. All of a sudden, Benny stops 15,000 people in this audience. And he calls my wife up on the stage. And he did not know I'd been healed of anything. He said, who are you? I'm a Lutheran minister. And he said, well, do Lutherans believe in healing? I said, well, Benny, I came here tonight with a brace in my leg. I couldn't walk. It was under my pants. But no, it, you, you said, get foot on the video, you go, this one does, because you just got hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. This one does. Well, it's completely healed. And he said, well, Thank you, Lord. Wow. the reason I called you up here is because not knowing that I've been healed of anything, because I'm sitting in the audience like you, and I get healed. He calls me up and he said, God's going to give you and your wife a healing mantle and you're going to, you have a church, I said, in Connecticut. He said, well, thousands will come to your church for healing and uh, you'll have a healing ministry. So we had over 40,000 people come through our little church in Connecticut. Yeah, but the next week, well, that, well you, were, you were sitting in the back of the church because you weren't speaking and somebody got healed. Remember? Yeah, okay. Well, okay. <laughs> This, long, this short story is becoming worry. longer and longer. Well, uh, I'm so pastor. I'm completely healed. So we go to 70 countries on six continents doing a global healing deliverance ministry. Tell them some of the healings you've but seen But the, the first church. Sunday, I'm back in the church. All right, I go back to the church. I go back to the church the first Sunday because Benny said thousands have come to my church for healing. So I go there, and I'm thinking of somebody. Oh, he said, somebody be healing your church this Sunday. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Get the story right, bro. All right, well, you know. <laughs> it was 20 years ago, you know. And I'm, so anyway... Um, Rivers and I go into the back of the church. We sit in the corner. Uh, we come in late because I just kind of wanted to see if somebody's going to get healed in my church because I thought if that happens, then the rest of this stuff would come true, right? So we're sitting in the back, and this woman comes in late with her friend, and she sits down, and at the, uh, at the end of the sermon, one of the elders says, okay, we're going to take prayer requests, and this woman stands up. And she says, she lived in New Haven, Connecticut, which was about 30 miles away from our, our church. And she said, this morning, I've, I've had this incredible issue with veins in my legs. I lost my job six months ago. I haven't been able to work. I woke up this morning, and the Lord said, if you go to a church in Westport, Connecticut, 30 miles away, you'll be healed. Wow. So she comes to church, driving around town, and she said, the reason I was late is that we kept driving by these churches, Catholic, Episcopalian, Methodist, Congregational. Finally, we come by this brick church, and the Lord says, that's the church. And this woman says, well, it's a Lutheran church. <laughs> she Amen. comes in, and she says, I don't know if this makes sense to anybody, but, and she sits down. And I'm in the back going, okay, Lord, I got it, you know. So she got healed that day. That was it. She was completely healed. Called the next morning. It said all the pain was gone. Was going back to get her job in New Haven. And so uh, there was another person healed that day, too. But when we saw that happen, we realized that the rest of the stuff would come true. So I ended up, Michael was catching my wife on the platform when Rivers and I went up on the stage at the Benny Hinn Crusade. He, at that and time, I didn't know that until we met, and he showed me his healing video. Wow. And I, he goes, is that you? I go, yeah, I'm catching Rivers. Well, tell him what happened in my church to you. I got a mic. <laughs> <laughs> I... I uh, <laughs> I was hungry for a, a touch from the Lord, and I had been fasting and praying for about two years. And I, I went up there to play golf, because he's a member at a good golf course. And I hadn't walked 18 holes up north in a long time. My cardio was really weak, so my back was tightening up, and I'm popping a leave like every third hole. Now, this is three, three years after my stroke. Yeah, this is 2007, October 23rd. When God touches you, you remember. And so Rev's like speed, you know those like speed walker dudes with the short shorts the way they walk? <laughs> he's walking like that and he's blowing by me. And in my head, I'm like, this, he's 60, early 60s maybe at the time. Oh, whatever, whatever. I don't have time to do the math, but yeah. So he, he walks by me and he goes, did you know I was a cripple? And he just blows by me. 
And I was like, rejoicing and really discouraged. I was like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, really? So he said, yeah, I got healed in one of your father-in-law's meetings in 2007. And something hit my soul. And he said, I want you to come to my church tonight. He said, you're not preaching. You preach too much already. I never forgot it. And I was. We were pastoring a very challenging environment in, in Southern Cal. But I knew that night was the night that God had set aside for me. And I walked in. And the only way I can explain it is that the heavens opened above me. And I told the Lord, if this is what I've been praying for and asking for, have this Lutheran pastor give me the whole service. He didn't know me from Adam. And he told me not to preach. So it was quite the, you know, lofty prayer. And right when I prayed it, I opened my eyes and Rev's standing there, you know. <laughs> He's kind of like the charismatic John Wayne. So he was like staring, <laughs> staring at me. And he said, come here, pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> so he tells me, if you have something to say, take the service. And I was filled with the divine fire of God. I don't know how to explain it. It was so glorious, I thought I'd die. I didn't want it to end. And I took the pulpit, miracles hit, people started getting saved and went home and everything changed. So I believe tonight the Lord is going to touch many of you. And, and, and I believe as these testimonies are being shared, that something's being stirred up within you. How many of you in this room need a healing in your body? Look at that. So Let too, me also say many. this. Look, there's, you know, we've seen Tourette's, trigeminal neuralgia, blind Lanier's, Presbyterian, blind Presbyterian, 2020 vision. There's nothing we haven't seen in, in our ministry. But, you saw you know, a dwarf like, field. A dwarf field. God is a healer, right? I know. So I'm going to sit here and I've asked the, uh, the church to just usher, whoever's going to come, just come around and come by me here. I'm just going to anoint you on the forehead with oil and then go on. But what I would like for all of you to do it's just to be praying. But people are critical in this room. There's some people here that haven't been given now, you know, terrible diagnoses. You know, they have incurable diseases. And, but it doesn't matter if it's a coal uh, to whatever, you know. You come. And, and, and I will anoint everybody in this room till the last person's anointed. All right? Thank you, Ruff. All awesome. right, that's fine. So I'm going to just move myself down here. Do you want to sit? Yeah, well, I'm going to stand for a while. But I'm okay, gonna, let's I told just the, get a stool, like, around, guys. Yeah. Do you want the worship team? Well, sure, yeah. But okay. I want you to look. This is time of reverence. The holiness, the presence of God is Amen. what's going to do something. Amen. And we need to honor that presence, all Amen. right? Amen. We need to honor that and realize that God is going to touch you and you'll never be the same. Amen. You know, what happened to Michael in my church years ago is what's going to happen to many of you tonight, all right? And that sermon tonight, I had no idea what he was going to talk about, but it just has set you up for what this is about right yeah. now. You come up tonight not for prayer. You come up to be healed. Okay? So, ushers, um, uh, would, hey, Rev, do you want me to just kind of like run point on the lineup? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you're sick in body, I want you to get into your aisles in a single file line. I need two ushers at the front of every aisle. And then as Rev is able to take them, he will. I also want two people. I need two presence group leaders behind everyone who gets prayer. And I want our most senior presence group leaders to be behind them, okay? Oh, of course. Do you need, um, do you need oil? Okay.
So, Lord, seal everything you've done tonight, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your healing power, Lord. Thank you, God, that not only did you touch us in the physical body, Lord, for your healing power to flow, but, Lord, even emotionally, spiritually, God, in every area, Lord. I thank you, God, that tomorrow will be a new day, Jesus. It will be a new day that you will make all things new, Lord, through the blood of Jesus, Lord. So we thank you, Father. Oh, we love you. Thank you. Just thank him, church, for what he's done today. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for everything you've done. You're so worthy of our praise. In Jesus' name, we love you. If you guys want to linger in the presence of the Lord, you are free to do that. We will see you next Sunday morning and Sunday evening. We love you guys so much. We believe that the nations will descend on this land. That the sick will be healed here. That the lost will be saved here. That the presence of the glory of God will rest here. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. That the mountains might shake at your presence. That the gospel will go forth from here. Shaking the earth for the glory of God. That the presence of Jesus Christ would dwell among us. Here we will enter into the peace of your presence. Here we will remain. Jesus said, remain in me and I in you. Here we will remain. This is holy ground. Where only one thing is needed, Jesus. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped here. May his word be taught in clarity and love here as we tell the generations to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works He has done. May the generations come to find Him here. To find Jesus here. Here. Together we will build the house of God. And a home for His people.